Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we did the first part of this problem. We set up the Lagrangian for a pendulum attached to a fulcrum, which oscillates back and forth, attached to a spring using simple harmonic motion. So now that we have the Lagrangian, we're trying to come up with the equations of kinematics, which can be obtained by using these two equations. We have two variables. We have the x and the theta variable. And so therefore, we have to have two sets or a set of two equations. What we need to do is find each of these individual components. Starting out with the first one, we can take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. And taking a look here, we can see that there's only one, one term here with the x. This is therefore is equal to minus k times x. So that was easy. Now we take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. Now notice there's a term here, there's a term there, and the rest do not have an x dot term. That means we just find the derivative of those two. Take the first one, we still have the 1 half m. 2 times 1 half is 1. That ends up with an m x dot plus 1 half times 2, it's 1. We still have the m. Notice x is the only component that's a variable. We end up with m times l theta dot times the cosine of theta. So there's the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. And finally, we now need to take this and take the time derivative of that, the ddt of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. There's a dot right there. Okay, this is equal to, here that's easy, that's simply m times x double dot plus we have to take the time derivative of this. Notice there's two variables. We have a theta dot and we have a cosine of theta. So we need to use a product rule. These are constants. M times L times the first, which is theta dot, times the derivative of the second with respect to time. So that would be equal to the negative sign of theta times the derivative of the angle, which would be theta dot plus the second, which is the cosine of theta, times the derivative of the first, which would be theta double dot. And simplifying this, we get the following. This is equal to mx double dot plus m times l times, and moving this in the front, we can say theta double dot times the cosine of theta minus, this times this gives us theta dot squared, times the sine of theta. This becomes the time derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. We can now combine that into our first equation. When we do, we get the following. We take this quantity right here, which is equal to mx double dot plus ml times theta double dot times the cosine of theta minus theta dot squared times the sine of theta. And now we subtract from that, or we can set it equal to, moving this over to the other side, making the negative a positive, and write it like this. So this is equal to minus kx. And what we could do is we can move all the x variables on one side, all the theta variables to the other side. So rewriting this one more time, we can write this as mx double dot plus kx is equal to, moving this to the other side, m times l, and making this a positive and this a negative, that would be theta dot squared times the sine of theta, minus theta double dot times the cosine of theta. And there's our first equation of kinematics, where we have x double dot, x theta dot, and theta double dot. All right. Next, we want to use the second equation. First, we find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. When we do that, we go back to the original equation, and we're looking for theta. So we have a theta here, and we have a theta there. Everything else will become zeros. So that means we get, this is, Theta, that's our variable. Everything else is a constant. One half times two is one. So we have m x dot l theta dot 
times the derivative of this with respect to theta, that would be equal to the negative sine of theta. And we have a second term right over here, plus MGL times the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sine. Okay. Next, we want to find, and let me go ahead and circle that so we can find it. Next, we want to find the partial value with respect to theta dot. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot is equal to. So we have the theta dot over here, we have a theta dot over there, and nothing else. So one half times this will become m times x dot times l. That's the variable times the cosine of theta. And here again, we have theta dot, so it would be plus 2 times L squared times theta dot. Oh, and we have to multiply that times 1 half, so got to be careful here. Let me do it again. It's 1 half times 2, that would be 1. We have M L squared times theta dot. Okay, that gives us the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. Quickly check to make sure I didn't make that mistake. So 2 times this, that gives us m, x dot, l, and cosine of theta. Here we have 2 times 1 half, that's 1m, times l squared times theta dot to the first power. All right, finally we need to take the time derivative of that. DDT of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. And let's see here. Here we have x dot and a cosine of theta. m and l are constants. So we have m times l times the product of x dot times cosine of theta, which means we have to use the product rule. That gives us the first x dot times the derivative of the... Ooh, did I do that correctly here? I'm just checking. Yes, I did it correctly here. But here, did I do it correctly there? Yes. All right. So ML, and let me make that a better L. Sometimes you just have to make sure we don't make any mistakes, right? So here we go. M times L times the first X dot times the derivative of the cosine, that would be the minus sine of theta, times the derivative of the angle with respect to, to time, which is theta dot, plus the second, which is the cosine of theta, times the derivative of the first, which is x double dot. And now we have to take the derivative of this, which is plus m l squared times theta double dot. I think we're now ready to go ahead and write our equation because we have the time derivative of the Lagrangian, derivative of Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. So writing this, that's equal to this quantity right here. We have m l times Writing this first, we can say that's the cosine of theta, or actually I like to write x double dot first. So x double dot times the cosine of theta minus x dot theta dot times the sine of theta plus m l squared theta double dot is equal to, because I'm going to move the partial value with respect to theta, which is this quantity right here, to the other side of the equation, making that positive. And so we get this following thing, but since they're both, these things are both negative here, so positive of a negative, that becomes minus the sine of theta. I'm going to factor out the sine of theta. I can factor out an m and an l times m times l, and I'm left with on the Right side equation, so this is gone, m and l are gone, have x dot theta dot. x dot theta dot. And then plus, because I factor out the negative, we factor out the m and the l, I have a g left, so plus g. Okay, there's the equation, the second equation, but before we put a box around that, can we simplify? And the answer is yes. We have an m here, an m here, and an m there. We have an L here, we have one of the L's there, and we have this L right there. Is there anything else we can simplify? 
Well, that looks like it's about it. So let me rewrite the equation in a simplified form. And we have L theta dot squared. On the left side, we have L theta double dot, not squared. So we have an L theta double dot on the left side plus this, plus the following quantity. We have x double dot times the cosine of theta minus x dot times theta dot times the sine of theta, that's all on the left side, equals what do we have left on the right side? We have a minus sine of theta times x dot theta dot plus g. And let's put a box around that. Let's see if there's anything else we could simplify. Wow, look at this. We have an x dot theta dot times the sine of theta, and we have an x theta dot times the sine of theta. They're both negative. So this whole thing cancels out with this. Wow, that makes it a lot simpler. Let's see here, what else can we do? So let's rewrite this. So that becomes L theta double dot plus x double dot times the cosine of theta is equal to minus the sine of theta or minus g times the sine of theta. Wow, eventually it came down to that equation. So now we have the two equations of motion. We have our first equation right here and we have our second equation right there. Now notice that they're both in terms of theta and x. If you want to solve these separately, if you want to solve this for x double dot or you want to solve, solve this for theta double dot, you have to do some additional algebraic manipulation, but we won't get into that. These equations are good. These will describe the motion of the pendulum where the fulcrum is moving back and forth as simple motion, and that's how it's done.